Okay, so we've got ourselves a ship. I mean, it's not going anywhere right now, but that's a minor setback. We can work on that. Uh, right. Say, uh -oh. this wouldn't happen to be your ship, would it? Because you sure walked in it like it was your ship. Um, and if this ship is yours, well, ma'am, you owe Spacer's Choice a hefty fine. Afraid we gotta dock your pay. Bold of you to assume I get any pay. Uh, <laughs> Um, you, you've got it all wrong. I'm a starship safety inspector. Oh, by the law. I'm yeah. so sorry. I had no idea we had an inspector coming. If you'd like to speak with my manager, I report to Constable Reyes in Edgewater. I will Edgewater's do that. Edgewater's not too far. Just follow the road east of here, over past the cemetery. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to inspect the crime scene before I make my report. Okie dokie. Carry on. Whew. Uh, okay. So we're heading over yonder. Oh yeah, there we go. I can see the town over there. Um, let's have a little look around before we do that. Primal. Ooh. Oh dear. Taking that. Shovel. Do I want a shovel? I guess. Got nothing. Hmm. Okay, nothing else around here. Uh, right, let's just follow the road. Got my walking speed's really slow. I'm gonna have to do a lot of jogging. Thank you. Uh, oh, more marauders. Is this actually the right way? The town, town's over there. I feel like, yeah, probably not. Okay, let's avoid these guys for now. I feel like at this stage, it's probably not wise to pick unnecessary fights. Let's go around this way instead. Okay, I think this is the path I should be following. Oh, more marauders. Well, probably can't avoid this guy. Thank you. Rebuilt mining gear. Is that any better than what I've got? Uh, armor management. Drag armor or helmet items up to the equipment slots to wear them. You can also manage your armor here, break them down, inspect them, compare to other armor, tag them as junk, or drop them. Cool. Um, armor 3, tech skills plus 5, stealth skills plus 5. There's only one more. What does it look like? Hmm. Although, do I want to be going into town dressed like a marauder? Why don't I just keep this on for now? Although, this probably looks super weird. <laughs> but whatever. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Thank you. Oh dear. <laughs> oh, the sky's pretty nice. Yeah. Very nice. And there's Edgewater. The graveyard looks a little, uh, a little shabby.
Whoa, hey, where'd you come from? Hello. Don't go ambling out in those hills. That's marauder territory, friend. Yeah, I noticed. Um, I'm just passing through. Ain't safe out here. You'd best head into town. Avail yourself of Edgewater's high walls and low, low prices. <laughs> uh, is that why you've got a pair of armed guards? I'm being vigilant. Don't want to get blindsided by some corpse-chewing marauder come stalking out the shadows. Wait a minute, you're telling me there's cannibals out there? Oh, worse. Unemployed cannibals. <laughs> you ever seen a marauder hold down a job? Or put a stake into society? Uh, if you've got a marauder problem, maybe I can take care of it. Well, if you're gonna go headhunting, talk to Constable Reyes back in town. She pays for marauders by the finger. Cool. I will do that. Um... Do I want to tell him that I'm Alex Hawthorne? Is he going to mention this landing violation? He's a grave digger. What's he going to do? Uh, nice to meet you. I'm Alex Hawthorne, captain of the Unreliable. Pleased to make your acquaintanceship. I'd shake your hand, but I've been hauling corpses. You don't want none of that on you. I certainly Name's do not. Silas. Junior in humor for the town of Edgewater. We're all part of the Spacer's Choice family. Um... I mean, the town kind of looks like it's falling to pieces. Ah, uh, heard a lot of new workers say that. First time they set eyes on Edgewater, they'll say, well, I can't work here. I don't belong here. Well, we do belong here. The Spacer's Choice family takes care of us from the cradle to the grave. As long as we provide our own cradles. <laughs> right. Um, who do I talk to about a power regulator? Definitely not the junior in humor, that's for sure. If you've got business inquiries, you should stop by Reed Thompson's office. He's up in the tower above the cannery. Head into town, follow the road. Cool, alright. I'll be on my way. Huh? What? I wasn't dozing off. Uh-huh. Alrighty. Uh, should we have a snoop around out here first before we go in? They're not going to mind that, right? What is this? Early retirement. Do you want to end your years in luxury and comfort? Do you dream of walking beneath the vaulted arches of Byzantium? Early retirement is finally here. Early retirement is your ticket to Byzantium. Early retirement is Chairman Rockwell and Minister Clark's gift to you. Selection for the early retirement pro bleh. selection for the early retirement process is by lottery. Winners enjoy an all expense paid trip to their new life in Byzantium, the jewel of Halcyon. Take this. And this. Welcome, Junior in Humor. Inhumers Association. Dear reader, your subscription to the Inhumers Association newsletter has expired. We'd like to invite you to renew your subscription. Act now and we'll throw in a copy of our newest publication, Shovel's Gazette and Quarterly. Space's Choice, Human Resources. Uh, Edgewater Cemetery is a property of Spaces Choice Company. The Spaces Choice family takes care of its own, from the cradle to the grave. I've heard that before. Graveside plots and headstones are provided by Spaces Choice at an affordable rate. Comfortable, spacious plots, custom engraved headstones and monograms, complimentary eulogy courtesy of the Order of Scientific Inquiry. Let your spirit rest in the privacy of a Spaces Choice brand gravesite. Wow. Uh, let's see. Uh, name Theodore Granger, industrial accident. Successfully incurred in, interred in grave site 13F, paid and accounted. Teddy's corpse was missing a hand. Deducted five bits from grave site fee because I'm a kindly fellow. Oh, God. Hmm. Just 
taking all your stuff. Now, one, one good thing about this game is... Well, hang on, let's read this first. Uh, Teen L makes the best gear for your friends and family. Consumables. Here you can use junk. Here you can use junk or drop your consumables. They can be used directly to gain a variety of boosts. Your emergency medical inhaler is shown at the top of the screen. It uses Adreno as fuel to heal you in an emergency and always keeps it loaded into slot one. Increase your medical skill to unlock more drug mixing slots that can hold all types of consumables, not just Adreno. Each slot is mixed into every puff of the inhaler for, for a combined effect. Your medical skill increases the duration of all these effects. Cool. Um, so yeah, when you nick stuff, once it's in your inventory, it's not actually marked as stolen. So you can just sell it to anyone. You don't have to worry about finding a fence or laundering it or any of that stuff. Convenient. Criminal activities. Trespassing, lockpicking, hacking and murder are all considered illegal activities and are frowned on by society. Avoid being seen if you want to engage in those activities without consequences. Cool. Right, I've got some armor there. Let's have a look at it. Mm, nine. Yeah, let's take that. It's more marauder armor by the looks of it. Hopefully no one's going to object to that too much. Cool, all right, let's just head into town. Okie dokie. Okay, so we need to go and see, uh, what was the guy's name? Reed Tobson. The unreliable's power regulator has been damaged beyond repair and must be replaced. Ada suggested you seek help in the nearby settlement of Edgewater. Talk to whoever runs the town. You've learned that a man named Reed Tobson is in charge of Edgewater. He might be able to help you find the part you need to fix the ship. Before I do that, we're going to have... A snoop around, as is tradition. Keep your distance, friend. Sick house is no place for a traveler. Sick house. Uh. Yeah, bit grim. Hello. I appreciate the company and all, but you really ought to leave. You don't want to be seen around me. Uh, why not? Because I'm sick. You don't want to associate with people in the sick house. We're not worth your time. I'm in about as much trouble as I can be. No reason you ought to be tarnished by association. People are going to talk. Why? What's going on here? Figured it was obvious. I got sick. Couldn't get better on my own. Got moved here for everyone's sake. Maybe you don't know this, but there's a real simple reason you don't talk to the plagued. You don't want what we've got. Wait, there's a plague? Um, I mean, I've got some training. Maybe I can take a look at you. Don't. Please. I could get into a lot of trouble. I mean, you obviously need help. That's kind of you to say, I suppose. But I don't need help. What I need is to understand my own folly. Company always tells us weak spirits lead to weak bodies. If I didn't want to fall sick with plague, maybe I should have worked harder. Maybe I should have taken more pride in my work. Wow. I mean, that is ridiculous. You can't blame yourself because you fell sick. I really wish you wouldn't say those sorts of things. I told you once already. People could be listening. I'm feeling a touch faint. If you don't mind, I'd like to be alone for a spell. Well, okay. 
Wow, there is something messed up going on. Uh. Sick days come out of my pay. Boss won't let us have any Adrena time. What the hell? Is he getting all excited about one of these little guys? Sprat. The skin of an entire adult Sprat. Did you know that Sprats are found on every human colony world? Did you care? Not really. Emerald Veil vale Barbershop. Ooh. It's a bit better. Conrad Sadik. Sadik? Merciful law. Sadik. Is that a marauder's outfit? I don't want you wandering into my shop wearing something you've lifted off a corpse. <laughs> Please don't touch anything. Your hands are probably crawling with germs. I mean, yeah. Physical to be fair. hygiene recapitulates moral hygiene. Cleanliness is next to lawfulness. I can show you my hands. No, thank you. That's quite all right. I've seen enough body parts in my line of work. I'm Conrad. You will report to me if your hair fails to meet Spacer's Choice aesthetic standards. You will also report to me in the event of your death, whereupon I will clean and prepare your remains for interment. I was just about to ask why he's seen a lot of body parts as a barber, but I suppose that explains it. Prepare my remains for what? Burial, in the unfortunate event of a fatality. It's what a barber does. We make you presentable. Yes. Uh, I've got some questions for you. Go ahead. You seem pretty enthusiastic about this place. Edgewater has been good to me. I consider myself privileged to work here. I am never wanting for work, not since the plague started. I keep hearing about this plague. Um, what can you tell me about it? The plague's come at us with a vengeance this year. Lost six workers in as many months. Ooh. I wouldn't call them good workers, mind you. If they were any good, they'd have been treated. Still, it is a shame. Uh, what are the symptoms? Fever, chills, fatigue, aching, vomiting, an excess of phlegm, a tendency towards belly aching. What you're describing sounds a lot like flu. Whatever it may be, I have developed my own palliative. Boiled canid liver and a splash of ethanol. Ugh. Um, so you don't treat all of your workers. Why? Company policy, friend. We don't have enough medicine to treat all of us, so we treat the best among us. Whose idea was that? Mr. Thompson's brainchild. Have you met him yet? Mm. Thoughtful-looking fellow, stares out of his office most hours. Right. All right, that's all for now. Yikes. Right, well, I'm not going to try and steal his stuff right from under his nose. I will, however, have a snoop around in the back room. Oh, boy. Conrad. Receptionist shot himself. This is bad. Company's going to have to call it for what it is. Destruction of Spacer's Choice property. <laughs> oh, God. Eugene was an asset, and somebody has to pay his body price. This is going to ruin us, so I was thinking that we pawn off his teeth. Eugene had a full set of gold teeth, heirlooms passed down by his family or something. You're processing his body, right? Just dig around and pry them out. We sell the teeth somewhere nice and quiet, use the bits to pay his body price, and nobody's the wiser. What do you think? Don't write back. In fact, don't talk to me at all. Just give me a special signal next time you see me. Waggle your eyebrows. Phyllis G. Uh, Spacer's Choice Cantina. Let's have a look. You read the latest report? Only the part that said we ain't making our quotas. If only McDevitt's folk hadn't abandoned us, Cannery could use those extra hands. Nothing we can do about that. Sure there is. We can have another zero G. Uh, 
Max, talk to you. Amelia Kim, hello. I don't know you. Uh, I'm Alex Hawthorne, Captain of the Unreliable. We might as well keep the shtick going, eh? Uh-huh. The Unreliable, you say? Mm-hmm. Never heard of any company supply ship with that particular name. I don't know what you're about, but this here is a Spacer's Choice drinking establishment. We're all loyal, hard-working company folk here. And what a fine establishment it is. You really think so? <laughs> That's kind of you. I've been trying to keep the floors clean. You got no idea how long it takes to scrub the tiles. Hmm. Guess I misreckoned you. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to be curt. We just got some problems lately. I can get you a drink if you'd like. Gotta ask you to enjoy your beverage within the premises, though. Can't risk you bringing a drink over to those deserters. You understand. Um, uh, what's this about deserters? <sighs> Traitors. The lot of them. Bunch of folks decided they were tired of working and went out into the wilds to fend for their own selves. Town's already struggling to make quotas, even without that band of slackwits abandoning their posts. Bunch of lazy, shiftless rung leeches. Anyway, enough about them. What can I do for you? Um, j just felt like chatting. Go ahead. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> Let's not mention that. Um, I was wondering if you knew anything about the Hope. The Hope? No, I've never mixed a drink by that name. I could get you a rum and something if you like. Wait, no, never mind. We're all out of something. <laughs> oh, darn. Uh, I, so I guess that means you've never heard of anyone from the Hope? Yeah, I got vague recollections of some folklore about a mysterious colony ship. So I feel like I shouldn't go advertising the fact that I'm from there. Uh, never, never mind. Oh, I almost forgot. I'm contractually obligated to recite company slogans to any visitors. You tried the best, now try the rest. Spacer's choice. <laughs> Great. Yeah, they need to work on that. Um, I want to talk to Reed. Where can I find him? Do you now? And what makes you think Mr. Thompson wants to talk to you? He's a busy man. You want to talk to Mr. Thompson, try ignoring your duties. He'll summon you up to that great big tower atop the cannery, and you'll get yourself a proper dressing down. Ah, uh, you say that like it's a good thing. It is a good thing. If you're not pulling your weight, you don't deserve to live here. Simple as that. Okie dokie. Well, thanks. Hmm. You don't mind me just snooping around back here, do you? No? Now, this is a habit from Fallout. Whenever I come into a bathroom, I want to check the, uh, the mirror, like the cabinet. But it's not a container in this game. I can't get in there. Taste the freedom with Spacer's Choice. Now with extra added artificial ingredients at no extra cost. Uh, oh. <laughs> no one can see me back here, it's fine. Yoink. Mm. Might as well just take all this crap. Space's Choice General Store. Day at the cannery. Don't go knocking your work. At least we've got Julius Moreau. It's not the best choice, it's Spacer's choice. <laughs> and before you ask, I'm all out of deluxe salt tuna, all I've got is gourmet. 
Great, cool, that means nothing to me. Uh, I have some questions. Go right ahead. Mm. So what's your take on this place? What, you mean Edgewater? That's a peculiar question. This a test? Am I being tested right now? It's uh, fine and dandy. Couldn't be happier. Wouldn't want to spend my life working anywhere else. Prettiest little town on Terra 2. Dude, the blister on my ass is prettier than Edgewater. Do us both a favor and don't try to prove your point. <laughs> I don't get paid for banter. Was there something you needed? Uh, yes, actually there was. Go right ahead. Anyone I should watch out for? Other than yourself? Definitely the vicar. Don't get me wrong. He seems a decent man, cut from church cloth, knows his scriptures. But there's something about him that bothers me. Like he's not one of us. Sometimes I suspect he doesn't even want to be here. Can't imagine why. Uh, all right, uh, anyone else? I'd keep a few paces between myself and Miss Holcomb, the town mechanic since her dear father left the workforce. No ill intent in her, mind. Just a queer sort, restless, scatterbrained, inclined to do first and think after, if you take my meaning. I mean, I'm not sure I do, but all right. Uh, is that everyone I should know about? Amelia. Definitely Amelia Kim. I advise against stepping foot in her drinking establishment altogether. Word is, they're going to replace her with an auto-mechanical barkeep. She's, what's the word? Obsolete. You don't want to associate yourself with that kind of person. Right. So about this plague that's supposed to be going around. Plague? I don't know anything about a plague. We are the very picture of hot-blooded physical vigor. I mean, there's literally a building full of people that would suggest otherwise. Any reason you feel like you have to hide what's going on? You have got the wrong idea about me. I've got nothing that needs hiding. Some of us who get sick are liable to exaggerate the conditions of that sickness, but the fact is, if you work hard, you have got no cause to worry. What do you mean by that? Survival of the fittest. It ain't just the law of nature. It's company policy. Medical treatment is commensurate with our value to society. Spacer's Choice will dispense medicine for the indispensable worker. Natural selection at work. I don't know if that's what I'd call it. And if you don't work hard enough? Then the hand of medical science will not grace you with its touch. And you must recover on the virtue of your own grit. Listen, you mind if we talk about something else? Rambling about company policy gets me feeling all lightheaded. All right, all right. I need to fix a ship. Do you know where I can find some parts? You ought to go have a talk with the boss, Reed Thompson. He's right, up in his yes, tower above yes, the camera. Yes. Cool. All right, well, I'll be seeing you. Uh, all right, what have we got here? The church? Aha, there's this infamous vicar we just heard about. Hello. Yes, what is it? You're an outsider. Fantastic. Vicar Maximilian de Soto at your service. Or Vicar Max, if you're the sort who prefers brevity. I so rarely get new people to talk to. Name your poison, anything at all. Spiritual counseling? This season's tossball predictions? The quickest way out of town? <laughs> uh, how did you know I'm an outsider? I've never seen you before. Right, And yeah. there's been no paperwork indicating a transfer. Half the time it's wrong, but a new worker without paperwork? Unheard of. Also, you lack the distinctive worker gaze. Usually either a deadening behind the eyes, or in some rare cases, a wild-eyed frenzy. Like a trapped animal. <laughs> uh, you seem quite dismissive of the common man for a spiritual leader. Oh, nothing could be further from the truth. I'm simply bemoaning the level of spiritual awareness in this town. Isn't it your job to raise that? Yes, but there are few who hear me in this miserable place. I must double my efforts to elevate my flock. These are good, hard-working people here. Hang on a minute, did you, did you just refer to this town as a miserable place? I mean, I'm not going to disagree so far from what I've seen. Yes, and thank you for pointing it out. It is wrong of me to succumb to distress. 
This place could be so much more, and I will continue in my quest to make it so. Good for you. Um, so what sort of spiritual advice do you offer here? They who are not satisfied with their work are satisfied with nothing. No. How about, mm. um, work fortifies the spirit. True exhaustion awaits idle hands. Um, I was actually asking what your religion was all about. The OSI teaches that the Grand Architect set a perfect system in motion at the beginning of time. Contentment is found by accepting one's role in that grand plan. Aha. Uh -huh. And what does OSI stand for? The Order of Scientific Inquiry, also known as scientism to the layperson. Uh, and how, how do you talk to this grand architect? Prayer? Meditation? Or what? You don't talk to the Grand Architect. Once the universe was set in motion, it stepped back. It has no concern for us. I had, it doesn't sound like a very motivational religious philosophy. What's, what's there to aspire to? We will eventually decode the plan and all its intricacies. Once we are able to deduce the properties of every particle in the universe and its trajectory, we will know Everything. Literally everything. The future, the past, each person's place within the plan, all will be laid out before us, removing struggle and bringing peace. No one will ever need question their path again. Some even believe this ultimate knowledge will unlock mankind's true potential, and we will all become akin to grand architects ourselves, after a fashion. That seems unlikely. I would love to discuss the finer points of my religion with you. Oh, wait. No, I wouldn't. <laughs> Seriously, though. To truly understand the metaphysics involved takes years of study and contemplation. Right, okay. Um, in other news, I am looking for a power regulator. Mechanical tomfoolery is well out of my purview. I suggest you take such matters to Mr. Tobson. Tobson in the, the cannery, cannery, yes. Oh, and a word of warning. If you're considering wandering around outside the safety of the town, you'd best be cautious. And why is that? Marauders are about. Though if you are planning on venturing outside, I do have a proposition that may interest you. One of the reasons I transferred here was to fulfill my duty in hunting down banned heretical texts. I happen to know such a book is, as we speak, tainting a collector's library in Emerald Vale. However, the Collector's residence lies outside the town's walls. My retrieval efforts have been thwarted by marauders who have overrun the property. Should you fare better than me, I'd pay a handsome sum for the book. A handsome sum, you say? Tell me more. So you'll consider it? I do appreciate you hearing me out, and um, your discretion. It's a handwritten journal. A faded blue cover with the name M. Bakonu handwritten in the lower corner. I'll mark where I saw it on your map. Assuming you're serious? And I assume you'll want to, what, burn it once you get your hands on it? What? No! I don't want to burn it! I would <laughs> never... I mean, I just want to... Uh, look, I have a very simple goal here. I just want to keep the writing out of layman's hands. It wouldn't do for such information to fall into public consumption. Right, okay, okay. Um, I'll need to know a little bit more about this book before I agree to this. It is not only a beautiful relic of a bygone time, it's also the thoughts of an early thinker on the nature of man's place in the cosmos. Not many in this colony could understand its true value, should they ever read it. Hmm. All right, I mean, this is definitely highly suspicious, but I'll look for your book. Thank you. If you retrieve it, you can always find me here. All right. The quest tracker displays objectives for the active quest. You can change your active quest in the quest log of your ledger. Uh, let's have a look. Okay, so the illustrated manual. 
Max says the journal was last possessed by a book collector whose residence was part of a small community directly to the north of Edgewater. He has marked the location on your map. Cool. All right. We'll do that in a bit. Hey there, Mary. Don't see you round here too often. Oh, I just came to talk to the vicar is all. None of us are above confessionals. What have you got to confess? You ain't thinking of deserting, are you? What? No, 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 no. And I resent the accusation. Wasn't nothing but a question. Do excuse me. I must be on my way. Verity to you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she's thinking of deserting. Our place in the universe is fixed. Right. Move along. Fine, screw you. Grenade launcher, haha. -ha. Come on, there we go. And what have we got? Um. Does anyone mind if I snoop around in this terminal? Yes? No? Uh, notifications lost and found. Found. One left hand severed at the wrist. Some bone damage. People, this is our second unscheduled amputation in as many months. Please exercise caution and safety around machinery. Maintenance fees will be deducted from your pay. Unscheduled amputation. locker room. Oh, there's someone in here, so I can't nick all their stuff. Shame. You gonna be here long? Yes? No? Sorry, I got a lot to do. I mean, you don't look very busy. God damn it. Space's Choice Automated Sales Units. Vending machines. Vending machines offer a variety of items to purchase, mostly from one company. A hack skill of 20 or higher allows you to sell items to the vending machine. Restricted items on a vendor can only be purchased when you have a high enough reputation with the associated faction or a hack skill of 40 or higher. Um. Okay, we've got some armor in here. Don't have enough money to buy anything at the moment, though. Cool, alright, we can always come back to that. <laughs> okay, so we need to go in the elevator to see what's his face, Reed Thompson. Notice, the Edgewater Saltuna Canning Facility strictly adheres to Spaces Choice standards of health and safety. Notice, schedule your sick leave with your Spaces Choice foreman and or supervisor. Be considerate towards other members of the Spaces Choice family. Allow two to four weeks to process and approve your scheduled sick leave. Lost hours must be compensated to the company. See Reed if you're having trouble paying for your sick leave. We'll try to arrange wage deductions instead. Remember, work invigorates the spirit. Sickness in the body reflects sickness in the mind and sickness in the character. If you find yourself falling ill, it may be time to schedule a meeting with our local vicar. Well, I don't know if I'd recommend that. 
Uh, there's another vending machine over here. It's not really much good to us right now, though. Until we've got some more money. Uh. <laughs> Ooh, that was close. <laughs> yep, don't mind me. Ooh. Alright, let's just give it a sec. Nice. Uh, you've gotten a weapon modification. Install mods at a workbench to upgrade your weapons, changing damage type, adding a scope, improving rate of fire, and more. Excellent. <laughs> Steel kick me sign. Don't know why, but sure. Right, I should be careful when I'm stealing stuff. I don't want to get caught. Lots of dead sprats. Wait a minute. Is that what they're putting in this stuff? Instead of fish? Because it kind of looks like it. As well as various worker appendages. Yikes. Phyllis Granger. Hello. You the new worker? Whatever. Make it quick, Tenderfoot. I'm busy. Uh, I'm guessing you're the foreman, Wade. I recognize that name. From the barbershop. That message. Foreman Granger, mind those words don't come out of your mouth unless preceded by yes or right away or thank you. Right, yes, sure. I'll let you get back to work. Hmm. Okay, so terminal. Interesting. From Reed Thompson. Phyllis, owing to your hard work and positive attitude, I have sanctioned your, sanctioned your access to medical treatment in the event of contagion. As you know, the company has not provided us with enough medicine to treat every worker. I wish I could treat every member of the Spacer's Choice family who fell ill to this plague, but I cannot. Medical privileges are strictly merit-based. Please do not, under any circumstance, distribute your ration of medication to any other worker. We're all in this together. Oh, sure, it sounds like it. Personal files. Ah, uh, last entry. Theodore buried last night. Reed asked me not to report his death in our quarterlies. Sounds fair to me. Was asked to prepare a statement or something for other workers. Been thinking about it. Don't know what to tell them. Don't end up like Theodore. Do your work, show up, wear a smile, and you'll get your medical privileges. It's a start. Hmm. Yoink. All right, that's enough snooping around for now. Why don't we head upstairs? Some elevator music. The grease monkey, Argo. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson, sir. You asked why it's taking so long to fix. The answer's technical. Don't apologize. Just. Try using small words for me. The cans bust open in the oven because she's set to cook saltuna, which isn't what we've got. <gasps> I knew Mr. it! Mr. Thompson, I think there's someone here to see you. Focus, Miss Holcomb. You and I are still talking. Let's start over. Walk me through the process. Show me where it's going awry. Well, sure. It's uh, mostly on account of what we're feeding into the mechanism. It puts food in cans. We have food, we have cans. Why won't it work like we need? 
She's expecting Seltuna of a certain size. We're filling the cans with... Sprats. Well, not fish. Sprats. Oh, they're done. Uh, hello. Seems we've got a guest. Really now, Parvati, I do wish you'd spoken up. She did. I do apologize. I was given no forewarning of your arrival, or I might have welcomed you at the gates myself. Um, are you Reed? I was told I should talk to you. I'm Reed Thompson, outpost administrator. I must say, wearing a marauder's outfit is in very poor taste. I oh, do yeah. wish you'd show your uniform a little more respect. <laughs> kind of forgot about that. Wait, uniform? What are you talking about? Shirt, pants, work boots, company approved colors, the, uh, honorable apparel of a loyal worker? Oh, right, yeah. I don't work for Space's Choice. Of course not. I don't have that kind of luck. Seems I allowed my excitement to run away with my wits. Been a few seasons since we've had a visitor pass through. Yeah. So, my ship needs repairs, and I'm looking for a power regulator. Only regulator we got is hooked up to the town transformer. Mr. Tobson ain't liable to be keen on dismantling it. I beg your pardon. I am most emphatically not keen on any such thing. No. I can't let you have our power regulator. But I happen to know of another one. And I happen to know exactly how you may retrieve it without frying yourself in the process. Uh, frying myself? Oh, yes. Saw someone put his hands on a regulator while the power was running. His legs were still twitching when we buried him. There's a power regulator in the old botanical lab. It's mostly abandoned, so all that power is being squandered. Go down to the geothermal plant. Reroute power from the botanical district over to us. Once their power shut down, you can have their regulator and be along on your way. Now, when you say mostly abandoned, what do you mean exactly? I was not entirely sure how to tell you this. The botanical labs are not legally inhabited, but there are people who live there. Right. Now, I don't think these people will take kindly to losing their power. No, I do not imagine they will be pleased. But like a parent disciplining an unruly child, you will be doing them a kindness. The people living in the botanical labs... They're deserters. Former workers. I need them back at their posts. I need them to come home. Why? Hedgewater is struggling. We haven't hit our production quota in years. If we don't meet our quotas this year, the company might shut us down for good. I need those workers back at their stations. I mean, to be honest with you, I've seen Edgewater, and I can't say I blame them for walking out. Neither do I. The fault was entirely mine. I pushed them too hard. My hope is that by cutting off their power, you will convince those deserters to come back to town. Before you go to the plant, I want you to stop by the botanical lab. Speak to their leader, Adelaide. Tell her the power's about to go, and that it's time her band of deserters came back to town. Uh, how will I recognize Adelaide? Adelaide's older than the other deserters. She's dignified, kindly. From what I understand, her camp looks to her for leadership. And what if Adelaide doesn't want to come back? That is not a hypothetical I enjoy entertaining. We need Adelaide back. Nonetheless, I will settle for the return of her followers. We belong to one community, the Spacer's Choice family. If we dissolve into factions, then we will all perish separately. Adelaide will understand that. All right, I'll see what I can do. My dad told me all about the plant. Taught me all he knew. I could come in useful. I mean, if that's all right with you, Mr. Thompson. Sir. I hesitate to part ways with Miss Holcomb, but I cannot deny that she is talented and may prove useful to you. You will need an administrative passcode in order to enter the plant. I am trusting you with mine and trusting Miss Holcomb to guide you if you'd like. Um, sure. I could use the company. Great! I got my wrenches and diagnosticators and hairpins and engine tape, so I'm all set. Well, I am glad to hear that. Best of luck to you, and thank you again for your help. It is a lot to ask of a stranger, I know. Well, no promises. CNP New Manager Seminar. Companions. You've gained a companion. 
They are characters that join you in your adventures and help in a variety of ways. Companions provide combat support, their skills enhance your skills, they increase your carrying capacity, excellent. You can unlock special companion combat abilities with the inspiration skill. Learn more about your companions in the companion ledger. Some people may require completing another quest before they will assist you. You can check your quest log for dependencies. Parvati can now join the party. All right, welcome to the crew. Uh, now, just so we're clear, I am not going to split the money with you, all right? 